Jesus' first message, you say, what did Jesus teach? His very first sermon is recorded in the Bible. Luke chapter 4. Coming out of the wilderness after he's water baptized, he picks a scroll up in his hometown synagogue, reads out of Isaiah 61. He says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, for he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. What is good news to the poor? That you have options. You don't have to be poor anymore. You know, people have run after provision. It becomes the number one thing they think about. Money, how to find money, how to find their provision. And they make all kind of bad decisions around that because of the pressure. The pressure of finding provision pushes you. It doesn't lead you. Right? It drives you. It pushes you. And people will say, I'm just tired of running. I'm tired of getting up every day and facing this weight of having to make decisions about how to find money. I can't wait till my vacation or when I retire because I finally want to find what I want to do. And so many people are in the round peg in a square hole because you're doing things you're never designed uniquely by God to do because you're doing it for a paycheck. Why? Because you don't have provision. So we have to discover how the kingdom of God is going to change that. And it's all tied around this Sabbath rest. All around the Sabbath rest. Now let's look at Colossians. Now Adam lost the kingdom. He lost the provision of God. So what did God do? He gave him a picture. He gave him a picture of what he was someday going to restore back. What was that called that you that were here? The Sabbath day. Remember? God gave him the Sabbath day. Now, I'm not going to cover the Sabbath year and the year of Jubilee. That's all last time. But just to kind of bring focus here, the Sabbath day, what could they not do on the Sabbath? Let's change it to the vernacular of Genesis chapter 3. They could not painfully toil and sweat. Okay? Now, without understanding, now again, there's the Sabbath year. They couldn't sow their crops for 12 months. And the year of Jubilee, that went three years without them sowing crops. And you'd have to ask, how is that possible? I'm glad you're asking. That's what, G, that's what God was trying to teach the Israelites. There's another way to live, and it was all aiming at Jesus. Let's look at that in Colossians chapter 2. So much discussion about the Sabbath. Denominations claim, you know, the Sabbath day is this day and that day, and it's, it's God's day, and if you violate it, you know, you're going to be struck by lightning. No, that's what law does, right? That's why a lot of you are afraid to miss coming to church. Now, you should come to church, but you have been trained by religion that God will be mad at you if you don't. And you have to change that because you learned that from religion, a law. But as we study this, you'll figure this out. But basically, the Sabbath day was a picture of what God was going to restore. So they, they, couldn't, they couldn't work. But Colossians says in verse 16, in the second chapter, it says this. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with, in a regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a what? Sabbath day. Pay close attention. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. So the Sabbath day was a picture of what God was going to restore. It was a shadow, though. It had no reality. If I showed you a picture of a Fig Newton cookie, you know, you'd see it. and say, that looks good. But if I gave you one, you would know it's good. That's called reality. So the Sabbath was a picture only, just a picture of what Jesus was going to restore. By the way, Jesus has come, and you're in Christ. So you actually have the reality of the picture. What did the picture tell you? They, couldn't pay, they were forced to, by law, not to painfully toil and sweat. The picture told you coming in Jesus was a way to escape the earth curse system of just surviving financially and making decisions around finding money, but you'd be able to find your identity and your purpose again. Come on, folks. It's called good news to the poor. Help me out now. <laughs> it's an escape from the weight. Now, we got to talk about how that happens. We will. We talked about the other day, but it is a shadow looking forward to Jesus then the reality, you are in the reality. The Sabbath is not a day, it is a person 
Jesus is your Sabbath. Understand that. You can kind of fight about Saturday, Friday, whatever day you want to call the Sabbath. You are the Sabbath. You live in the Sabbath. Jesus is your Sabbath. He has restored the seventh day. He set you in Father's house as a son and daughter. He gave you citizenship in his kingdom. He has filled you with his very spirit. You now live in the seventh day. Now, let's talk about that. Again, let's go back to our scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. There then remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That's New Testament. That's you. That's not Old Testament. The Sabbath rest, they couldn't work, is available to the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest, rest from his own work, just as God did his. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, back at creation, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he'd been doing, so he rested from all of his work. He wasn't tired. Why did he rest? He was finished doing what? Completing all that man needed on the earth. The earth is finished. Everything's there for man. Then man's to live in the seventh day. So understand, go back to Hebrews chapter 4 now. You'll get this. There remains, there remains a Sabbath rest. That's the shadow for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest, it's optional. Anyone who enters into God's rest also rests from his own work, referring back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, just as God did his. God rested when he worked because he was finished. Everything is complete. What this scripture is saying, there is a place, there is a way to live life of restoration. Jesus brought the reality of the kingdom into your life. Now you can find that rest. Everything's finished. Everything is complete. Everything you need in Christ. Is that making sense? There is a Sabbath rest. Sabbath was a picture, a shadow looking forward in Christ. You now live in the reality of the Sabbath. It's Sunday every day in your world. Okay? Now, how do I tap into the Sabbath rest, Pastor? Exodus chapter 16, I'll pick out one scripture. Remember the manna? The manna came down in the, mor uh, in the, in the evening, in the morning, I guess you should say, and then they would eat the manna, but it would evaporate by noon. Now, the Bible says God did that for a purpose. He was training Israel to trust him for their provision. They're about to head into battle. They're about to, well, conflict, if you will. They didn't really fight with swords. They're about to head into the promised land where they're going to encounter giants and walled cities, and God has to train them to trust him. That's why the manna evaporated every day. But Moses is here in Exodus chapter 16 talking about the manna. He said to them, this is what the Lord commands. Tomorrow is to be a day, a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever's left and keep it until morning, which is different because, next verse, so they saved it until morning. This is the morning of the Sabbath, as Moses commanded, and it didn't stink or get maggots in it because previously it would not, it wouldn't make it overnight. They couldn't store it. It came every morning and then it evaporated or it, it just got bad. So God, Moses says, eat it today because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. You'll not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there'll not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. The Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day, he gives you bread for how many days? All right. That's the double portion. We read that. You'll find that in Isaiah 61 as well, speaking of the church age. The double portion is yours. You've got to answer this question, though. How was the Sabbath rest possible? You have to eat on the seventh day. So how is it possible? The double portion, meaning that there's more than enough. There was enough, more than enough. And, of course, the Bible had the Sabbath year where they went a whole year without having provision as far as sowing and, and toiling, and the year of Jubilee, three years without sowing their crops. But God is trying to get them to understand he is their source, and there's another kingdom, another way of living that they've not experienced. He gave it to them in pictures because Jesus hadn't come yet, but now you have the reality of that. 
But I submit this to you. Most of the church is living like they did, going out on the seventh day, trying to find provision and not finding any. Because they have not been taught what the Sabbath was all about. They've not been taught of the reality of Christ. They've not been taught that they live in the Sabbath, that the seventh day has been restored to them. They don't know how to tap into it. And thus they're living like they're still under the earth curse system. You can say amen. That's how it is. I know. Been in financial services all my life. People are on debt, just surviving. So the, the Sabbath rest is only possible by what? the double portion, simply meaning more than enough. Without more than enough, there's no rest. You know that from experience. More than enough. You gotta have more than enough to have options. More than enough, okay? Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing and thanks for watching.